Hello everyone. This is my first video recorded in English. I hope you will like it. Today we will talk about power query. You see that we have two tables here. The first one is sales. The second one is traffic. What we want to do today is to combine them together with a full outer joint. We did it before in the last video, but this time we will do it with an other approach. Let's watch it. In the last video, we did it by creating two separate queries. The first one is a left outer merge. The second one is a right anti merge. And then we merge we append the two queries together to give the outcome. In this video, we will do the same, but first we will append the two tables together to give the following layout. With this layout, we can further group them together to give our final outcome, the desired outcome. I'm going to show you step by step in Power Query how to do that. First, we need to load it into the Power Query. Select anywhere in the table, go to Data tab from Table Range. We can see that it is loaded into the Power Query Editor called Sales. Actually, this is the name of the Excel table. That's why we should always name our Excel table. Let's change the data type here. It should be date only. I do not need the time portion. Replace current. The other data type is find. So close and no to. Know it to create a connection only. Here, we can see that the sales query is created as a connection only. We can do the same for the traffic table here. Go to data from table and range. But this time you will find it. The query link is traffic number two. Why is that? Because I already had the traffic query here. Indeed, the first three queries you see here was created in the last video you may want to check it out for more details in the last video. Now let's focus on our existing approach. Go back to the traffic queries here. Change the date to date. I don't need the time portion. The other two uh, data type is OK. So I'm going to close and load it to a create connection only. Here we can see that the two queries we just created. Now I right click on the sales query and then select append. This is where we input what we want to append. We can append three or more tables if we need, but in our case we have only two tables. The first one it should be sales table, so let's select sales. The second one will be the traffic number two. Press OK. Now in the Power Query Editor, we have the appended one query. Indeed, we can do it right here on the Home tab. Here, the append queries. We can append the queries as a new queries. But we don't have to repeat the steps. We did it already. Let's go to the append one query and see what we have. Here is the query. You can see that basically this is the sales table. However, with one additional column called traffic in. This is actually coming from the traffic table. From row 57 onward, we can see that these are the data coming from the traffic table. That's why nothing for the transaction count, nothing for the unit sold, nothing for next sales. What we have is only traffic in here. For the same reason, if we go back to the top, we can see that this data is coming from the sales table. That's why we do not have anything for the traffic in column here. So what we need to do is to put them together. We can do it by selecting date and store, and then we group them together. 
by using the function group byte. Go to transform and then select group byte. So date and the store are the two attributes we want to group them together. When we group them together, we want a new column called transaction count, which is basically the sum of the transaction count. So here under operation is summed under the column I want transaction count. Add another aggregation as the second column, unit sold. Same operation, sum. But this time we want the sum of units sold. The third one is the next sales. Again, it will be the sum of the next sales. Now you may be knew it already. The final one should be the traffic int, which is the sum of the traffic in column. Before we press OK, let's explain a little bit what is happening here. We are going to group the date and store together. So here, for example, for the store aid on the 1st of January, actually, we have two rows of data. The first one is the, is the traffic data, and the second one is the sales data. So when we try to sum the transaction count, units sold, and next sales together, basically because there is nothing in the traffic record, we are adding nothing to it. For the same thing, when we try to add the traffic in, because either one have the value, so we are basically grouping them together like a pivot table. We are having a summary of it. Now press OK, and we will see that, wow, we just grouped the data perfectly. The sales data is there, and the traffic data is there on the same record. If we scroll down all the way down, we can see that these are the data with traffic only, without any sales. Now we can do some editing, select the three columns, go to the transform tab, replace values. We want to replace all the node with a zero because they are the record with the traffic data but with no sales. So zero will be a better indication. Now, OK. We can sort by the date uh, by the stored in ascending order, followed by the date also in ascending order. Now we are ready to go. Let's close and know it too. This time, I would like to know it to an existing worksheet. Let's go to the output worksheet. This output is actually coming from the previous video. So I want to note our current result next to it so that we can compare the result side by side to see the difference, if any. OK, now go back to the output worksheet. Let's change the color to orange. This is the result from the previous video. And on the right hand side, this is the result from our current approach. We can see that they are all identical. We solved the problem with two different approach. Which one would you prefer? which one you like more. You can share your comment with us by leaving your comment below. Thank you for watching. I hope you like it.